SpaceX's Starship program, which boasts the world's tallest and most powerful rocket, will eventually put people and cargo on Mars. The latest prototype, SN20, is waiting for the chance to go into orbit. Several other prototypes have made flights, ground tests, and sometimes even testing mistakes in the effort to improve future flights. Here's everything you need to know about the SpaceX Super Heavy Space Booster. Number 9. 20 Years in the Making Billionaire Elon Musk created SpaceX in 2002 from the sales of two earlier businesses, software service internet company Zip2 and online payment provider PayPal. His ultimate goal was to create a Mars settlement company. That said, SpaceX has been plenty busy in other realms of space. The company built Dragon cargo ships and Crew Dragon astronaut spaceships for the International Space Station and launched satellites for numerous customers aboard the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. As for Mars, Musk periodically releases new far-out Mars visions and sometimes changes the names and metrics of the systems for sending crews, cargo, and rockets. Musk rebranded his Mars colonizing spaceflight system as Starship in 2018. Musk said in a 2018 tweet, technically two parts. Starship is the spaceship upper stage and Super Heavy is the rocket booster needed to escape Earth's deep gravity well. SpaceX wants Starship to be fully reusable, with both the rocket and its booster capable of landing after a launch to be recovered for future flights. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets are partially reusable. The company can regularly land and relaunch the boosters, but not the upper portion or stage of the rocket. Number 8. Key Design Change At first, Musk planned to make Starship out of carbon fiber, but in January 2019, he announced that the craft would be built from stainless steel instead, Space.com reported. While stainless steel is heavier than carbon fiber, Initially increasing the needed fuel for launch along with the associated cost, Musk said stainless steel has better thermal properties for spaceflight, and so it would reduce the cost in the long run. Musk later said that this design change was the best decision he made for the project. Starship has undergone a few more design changes since 2019, too. Musk chose to put six Raptor engines on the Starship vehicle instead of seven. He also changed the number of Raptors on the Super Heavy, initially dropping the number from 35 to 31 and then increasing it again to include up to 37 Raptors. Not all engines will be needed on each flight, but at least 24 Raptors are required to carry the huge craft into space, Musk has said. A surprise design change to Starship was revealed in 2021, Space.com reported, when Musk said watching Sasha Baron Cohen's 2012 film, The Dictator, inspired him to make the vehicle pointier. Round is not scary. Pointy is scary, Cohen's Admiral General Aladdin, a fictional dictator, said of a missile that his engineers created. Number 7. Super Heavy Boosters Making Good Progress Toward Test Debuts SpaceX is making good progress on Starship's first two Super Heavy boosters, both of which could potentially be ready for their first major test campaigns before the end of the year. On November 19th, some 10 weeks before the process began, SpaceX crane Super Heavy B-5's methane LCH-4 tank on top of its oxygen LOX tank, marking the end of major structural assembly for the 69-meter tall booster. A team of welders has since been working around the clock to weld the two tanks together and complete a transfer tube that routes methane propellant down through B-5's oxygen tank. Two days prior, CEO Elon Musk shared a photo of SpaceX's other Super Heavy booster, B-4, which has been slowly progressing towards test readiness for more than three months. It's unclear why SpaceX has been so sluggish to prepare Super Heavy B-4 for testing. But with B-5 finally approaching the finish line, the company will soon find itself in a position where it will need to decide which booster to proceed with towards the program's near-term end goal, the first orbital Starship test flight. Once Booster 5's two halves are welded together, only a few things will set it and Booster 4 apart. In recent weeks, SpaceX's slow progress on Super Heavy B-4 relented a bit as technicians began closing out the booster's raceway, a conduit for plumbing, wiring, and avionics, with basic covers. 
More importantly, SpaceX also began reinstalling Raptor engines and installing heat shielding around those engines for the first time. In the photo Musk published on November 17th, the heat shield is easily visible and there are signs that it will ultimately enclose the entire outer ring of 20 Raptor boost engines above their nozzles. Number 6. Super Heavy B4 Before and After the Start of Raptor Heat Shield Installation As of November 17th, SpaceX has reinstalled all 29 Raptor engines on Booster 4 partially finished the outer ring of Raptor heat shields and set the stage for more heat shielding around its nine center engines and the gap between those inner and outer Raptors. Shielding the Raptor center engines in a way that still seals off Super Heavy's aft will be even more challenging given that all nine need to be able to freely gimbal to vector their thrust while the outer ring of 20 Raptor boost engines are fixed in place. At pace of work established over the last few months, it will likely take SpaceX several more weeks to finish that heat shield and install seven aero covers over racks of sensitive equipment installed around Booster 4's base. Number 5. Booster 4, September 8th Super Heavy Booster 5, on the other hand, has taken a slightly different path through assembly. Unlike Booster 4, which rolled out as little more than a giant steel tank with Raptors half installed, SpaceX appears to have installed most of Booster 5's external plumbing, wiring, and equipment racks, and maybe even the start of its Raptor heat shield during assembly instead of after. Perhaps as a result, SpaceX has taken more than 10 weeks to stack Booster 5 versus 2.5 weeks for Booster 4. But given that Booster 4 still doesn't appear to be complete some 18 weeks after its assembly began, there's a chance that Booster 5 will ultimately take 4 to 6 weeks less to reach initial test readiness. If SpaceX does complete Super Heavy B5 well ahead of B4's schedule, it will soon find itself with two test-ready Starship boosters, but only one orbital class stand with which to test them, potentially forcing the company to make some interesting decisions. Number 4. Round the Moon Trip Japanese billionaire Yusako Mezawa, founder of Japanese e-commerce giant Zozo, bought a Round the Moon Trip, dubbed Dear Moon, aboard Starship in September of 2018, a ticket to fly himself and several artists on a lunar venture. Back then, Starship was called Big Falcon Spaceship and Super Heavy was called Big Falcon Rocket. While Starship hasn't started testing yet, Musk said he expected it could be ready for the mission as soon as 2023. In January 2020, Mizawa briefly considered holding a controversial girlfriend contest in association with the Dear Moon flight, but withdrew the offer in 2020 only two weeks before the announcement. Number 3. SN15's Perfect Landing SpaceX's Starship SN15 prototype stuck the landing on the 60th anniversary of the United States' first ever crewed space flight, when astronaut Alan Shepard blasted into space aboard NASA's Mercury capsule. On May 5, 2021, SN15 soared 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers into the sky and made several maneuvers in midair. Six minutes after takeoff, the prototype made a safe touchdown on a concrete landing pad at Boca Chica. As of August 2021, this was the latest flight for the Starship program. In a flight description, SpaceX representatives said several vehicle changes were present in the new prototype. Number 2. Great Heights SpaceX's newest Starship prototype briefly stood atop a super-heavy rocket booster for the first time on August 6, 2021, marking the tallest ever rocket built. Dream come true, Musk wrote on Twitter of the stacked Starship. The stacking test at Boca Chica included mating the two vehicles for an hour, with the joined Starship system standing at 395 feet, or 120 meters. For comparison, NASA's massive Saturn V moon rocket, used for all the Apollo missions, was just 363 feet, or 110 meters tall. Individually, the Super Heavy stands at 230 feet, or 70 meters tall and Starship SN20 added another 165 feet or 50 meters of height. The two vehicles are expected to undergo numerous technical tests in August to prepare them for an orbital attempt. Number 1. Orbital Flight Attempt Regulation remains the big uncertainty as Starship awaits its chance to make an orbital flight test. 
If all goes according to plan, Space.com reported the spaceship will make a round-the-world trip to splash down off the coast of Hawaii after 90 minutes, while the first stage of the super-heavy rocket should return to Earth six minutes after the launch in the Gulf of Mexico. However, the FAA has undertaken an environmental assessment of the Starship's mission, which delayed SpaceX's plans to attempt the flight in July of 2021. Even after the assessment is finished, there could be more certifications to consider. Depending on the outcome of that environmental assessment, SpaceX may also be required to go through a more detailed review culminating in an updated environmental impact statement. Do let us know in the comments what are your thoughts about the mission. Thanks for watching.